the game chief here today i'm going to be doing a video on splitting your types.xml and your cfg spawnables types.xml files into their own folders so they look like this right here so you know you have your custom custom types folder here your different cfg spawnables and all that nice and clean versus this absolute mess that is this when you have all your mods and a giant file and you end up with 46,000 plus lines of just kind of mayhem as always, timestamps will be on screen right now, but this should be fairly short. This video is sponsored by Caliber Servers. Caliber Servers provides dedicated machines with amazing configurations such as the Ryzen 9 5950X and the Ryzen 5 5900X. Don't need that much horsepower and don't want to break the bank. They also have lower spec machines and even VPS slash KVM servers. And along with that, they also offer regular game server hosting as well. At Caliber Servers, the customer is king. All clients get direct contact with the owner via WhatsApp for emergencies. Check out their website and Discord server for more information and to find a plan that is right for you. Mention the Game Chief while ordering and use code the Game Chief for 10% off your first purchase. And don't forget to thank them for sponsoring these videos. So part one is why you should split your types.xml and CFG spawnable types.xml files into their own little separate ones. So the main reason you would want to do that is to kind of clean up your XML files. Moving all of your custom entries to their own folders for each mod keeps your default files clean and protects your files in the event that the default XML files get reset to, to a game update. I have seen that happen many times to where someone goes in here, they modify the types.xml file in here, and then it gets updated in the game update and it removes all their custom files. So this is a way to keep them all separate. And it also means if you make a mistake in your types file, say with a certain mod beforehand, if you did it in here with types.xml, if you broke a certain line, anything below it would essentially all be broken. And with this method of separating them into their own folders and their own different files, if you break it, you're only going to break uh, the types for a single mod versus every single mod on your server. It also means if you decide to remove a mod, it's super easy to remove that mod um, types without having to dig through and find all the entries in your types file. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started with setting up the custom types and CFG spawnables. In this case, this is just kind of showing my test server, which I've already done this on. And we'll be doing this on the main server that we've been using in all these other videos. And we're going to be installing two mods today. So we're going to use Masses Mini Item Overhaul and Code Lock as an example. So we're just going to go ahead and quickly install this on our test server. Alrighty, so we went ahead and started our server after getting those two added. And if we look over here and we refresh, we can see we now have the code lock folder and the masses mini item overhaul folder. We're going to need both of those. And if we look in here, we can see they have XML files and they have the spawnables and the types. And however, these are not, you know, just standalone ones. If we drag it in here, it just has all the items and that's it. So we're going to be showing you how to make this into its own standalone file so that way you don't have to put it in your normal types.xml folder. So we're going to go back to the main route. We're going to go to our MP missions and then we're going to select the mission we're using. In this case, we're using Chinar, so we'll go inside here. And the file we're looking for is cfgeconomycore.xml. So we're going to go and open this file in our preferred text editor. And this just kind of sets up some basic things, but what we're going to do is we're going to add on to that. So for our first mod, we're going to do code lock first. So we're going to do CE folder. So we're going to be specifying we're using a custom folder for this. So we're saying CE and then that the folder is going to be in custom types and then the folder code lock. So we'll go ahead and create those real fast. So inside here, we'll do a new folder. So we have custom types, and then we'll need a new folder called code underscore lock. And then we'll continue right here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to specify the file. It's going to be types.xml inside that folder. And then we have to specify that the file name is types.xml and the type is a types. So it's not a CFG spawnable or anything like that, it's just types. And then we'll go ahead and close this CE. 
So as you can see right here, the CE opens and then CE closes and ends it all. So that's just kind of how basic XML structure is gonna work. And we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna add a new mod. So we're, initially we're gonna create a CE entry for each individual mod that we have custom files for. And before we do that, we're gonna quickly just jump into code lock and we're gonna create that file. So we have types.xml. And then once we do this, as we can see here, this is an XML document. And in some cases, you may need to make sure you have view and then you have file name extension showing up. So when you change it, it actually changes it properly. But we're gonna go ahead and open this up. And as we can see, there's nothing in it right now, which is perfectly fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here to the DB folder and we're gonna open up the regular types so you can see what it looks like. And this is how the normal base vanilla game types work. So we're gonna copy these top two lines here. We're gonna paste that in. And then we're gonna add on to here, we're gonna do slash types. So we just have to specify, you know, it's XML, that version, the encoding, all that. And then we open the types tag and then we close the types tag. So all of our entries have to be in here. And if we have a look here, we can go ahead and go back a bit to the code lock folder, the XML one, and then we have types.xml. As we can see here, it has the single type for the code lock. So we'll copy that, we'll paste it in there, and then we gotta make sure that it is inside of the types tag. Most mods don't give you the slash types tag just because they anticipate you just copying it into your normal ones. But in this case, because we're creating a brand new XML file, we do need to make sure that it has the entire thing here, like we're showing right here. So we'll go ahead and save that and we can close out of that. And then for code lock, it only requires the types that XML doesn't have a CFG spawnable, so that's done. So if we were to remove that right there, if we save this, restart our server, it'll be good to go. It will launch and code locks will spawn. But we're gonna go ahead and add mass as many item overhaul as well. And then again, I'm just gonna call this one mass instead of mass as many item overhaul. You can name this whatever you really want. Then we have to specify the file again. So again, we're gonna specify the name of the file, so types.xml. You can really make this whatever you want. The name doesn't matter, but for consistency sake and for just logical purposes, we'll keep this as types.xml. And then we'll specify the type that it is. And it's a types file. And then we'll end this file entry by doing the slash and ending it there. And then mass mini item overall does use a CFG spawnables um, .xml file as well. So we have to add that in. So we'll add another file. So I'm gonna call it CFG spawnable types. Again, you can name this whatever you want, .xml. And then for type in this case, you have to specify that it's a spawnables. Spawnables type. And then once again, we'll go ahead and close that off. And then we need to end this off here with the end CE to end the CE tag here. So essentially you want to add a new mod. If it just had types, you can just copy this, add it to the bottom, rename it, and you'll be good to go. And then if it has CFG spawnables as well, you need to make sure you have both of them. I'll include a copy of like a template of this in the video description. I'll also do like the baseline of the types file. It's super simple. If you follow the video, you should be fine, but I'll leave that in the description just in case. So now that we specify these two files, we need to go and create them. So we're gonna go back. Back into our admission folder, our custom types, and we're gonna need to create a new folder to match. And because we named it mass, we'll name that mass. And then we'll need to create a new file. So this is our types.xml. And then we need our CFG spawnables.
Then we have CoG spawnable types.xml and types.xml. We're going to go ahead and open up both of these in our text editor. And then same thing with this, as far as our types, we can copy the code block one just because it's so small. And we'll just get rid of this type of the code block. So we have a blank file here. All it has is the XML versioning and then it's open types and then close types and that's where we're going to paste everything in. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the main folder of the server, go into masses mini item overhaul, XML, and then what we're looking for here is the types file. So we'll open that. And we can see it has all the different types. We're going to do control A to highlight it all, control C to copy it. We're going to go into here. We're going to hit control V to paste it. And then as we can see, everything matches. All these types were inside of the types with the S um, tag. So that should be all good to go. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then next we need our spawnables. So we'll go ahead and check and grab their copy that they provided. And this one they added in a comment. So I'm not gonna control it. I'm just gonna copy that section. And if we paste this in here, we can see we're still missing the beginning tags. So we can go back over to server, our server here. MP missions, Shinaris Plus. And then we can look at our CFG spawnable types.xml. So this is the base one, same thing as you can see of the types. It simply declares what encoding to use. And then instead of slash types or, you know, a types tag, it's spawnable types instead. And then at the very end, it's going to be slash spawnable types to close it. Oops, there we go. So we open with spawnable types and then we close with spawnable types with the slash there. So that opens and closes it. And then we have just different types here from the mod. And we can go ahead and save that. And we'll go over to the CFG economy core file that we were modifying. We'll go ahead and save that. And then at this point, we've added the two mods that we wanted to add. And we can go ahead and restart our server and test it and see if everything's working as we thought it would. So we'll go ahead and shut it down and we'll restart it. Alrighty, now that our server has launched again, we'll go ahead and join it. And we'll go ahead and check to make sure all those items are spawning like we expect them to do. Alrighty, now that we are in game, we can go ahead and do some testing to make sure they spawn. So I am going to be using the plus plus admin tools here to do this using their XML editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search to verify. Let me see here where to go. There it is. So I'm going to verify that each of these files are working. So to verify the types file for code lock is working, that the types file for mass as many items is working, and the COG spawnables for mass as many item overhaul. So we're just going to make sure that all of these things are spawning as they should. So we can use the XML editor to test that. So we're going to look up code lock first. And we're going to go ahead and get item status. And we'll wait on this to make sure it spawns. And as we can see here, it was able to find a bunch of them that had spawned. So that shows us that the code lock spawning is working. And we can go ahead and test another item. So in this case, the press vest black. So we'll go ahead and try to get that. And then so the code lock one that showed that the code lock types is working and then the pressed vest is part of the types.xml for mass as many items. So we'll see if those spawn as well. Alrighty, and as we can see here, those pressed vests did spawn as well. So that shows us the types.xml is working as intended. So we'll go and close out of that. And next we're gonna go ahead and look up a CFG spawnable item instead. And as we can see here as well, it looks like those spawned no problem. So that shows the CFG spawnables is working as expected. And that's about it. It's just a cool little way to separate all your types and CFG spawnable files into their own folders, just to make it a bit easier for managing, adding and removing mods, and also, you know, finding errors and stuff like that. That way, in case there is an error, you will only break one mod spawning versus everything. So it's just kind of a neat way to keep everything separated. It's also very helpful, so in case your types.xml file gets overwritten by a server update, 
Of course, I do recommend copying your custom types folder to a backup location just in case. Same thing for your CFG economy core file as well, because that one we did modify as well right here to add those custom folders in. So I would recommend always keeping this file backed up along with your custom types or for anything, any file that you modify from the normal, keep that backed up to your desktop somewhere else just in case it gets overwritten by an update. And that's about it. It is possible I forgot something or there's some sort of mistake. So as always, corrections will be in the video description and the pinned comment below. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video or join my Discord server, which is always in the video description. Joining my Discord server allows you to DM me. There's also a channel for general support where myself and others can help resolve any issues you may be having. And if you guys have any video suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. And other than that, have a good one.